Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of The Wednesday Checkup. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing a story with you that happened a couple of weeks ago where unfortunately, a patient filed a complaint against me. That made me really emotional. Let me tell you why. Before we start, I wanna let you know, I'm gonna be changing some details about the patient just so we maintain this person's privacy and we don't make anybody feel uncomfortable because that is not the goal of this channel. Our job is to stay happy, healthy, learn about ourselves, learn from our mistakes, and that's what we're gonna do with today's story. Here we go, let's get started. To set the scene, uh, I'm working in my outpatient family medicine office and I see a patient on my schedule. I have the demographics that he's a male, he's in his late 20s, and also the complaint or reason reason why he made the appointment. Patient would like MRI for low back pain. Patient comes in, my nurse uh, rooms the patient, I go in and we start having a conversation. The history of present illness goes as follows. The patient is a late 20s male, works many hours in his job as a department store salesman where he's on his feet. He's been complaining of low back pain for an extended period of time, worse sometimes, getting better sometimes. Currently is not in a lot of pain somewhere like three to five out of 10. It does get pretty bad at times, going all the way up to an eight. This patient has had prior back surgery. We don't really have a clear understanding as to what the surgery was and what the indication for the surgery was, but we know there was a back surgery performed. And my first question is, because my goal is to help the patient and answer the patient's question directly was, you told me, or at least you told my nurse that you would like an MRI. What are you looking to find out with the MRI? He wants an MRI because he's worried that the activities he's doing in his everyday life could be causing more damage to his low back and that perhaps there may be scar tissue from the past surgery or perhaps there's something else going on within his lumbar or thoracic spine that could be causing his symptoms. I understood where he was coming from, so I said, okay, let, let's take that apart piece by piece and we'll have a longer conversation than we originally scheduled. The visit was supposed to be 15 minutes, which is normally what we get for an acute visit, but I said, we'll, we'll spend extra time because I really want us to both be on the same page and especially because I've never seen you before, I wanna create a little bit of a relationship before giving any kind of advice or guidance. One of my first questions being sports medicine and osteopathic medicine trained was, do you do any kind of physical activities? And how does your back pain affect that? He told me that every morning or pretty much five days out of the week, he does calisthenics in the morning for about half an hour and he's able to do those pain-free and actually he gets a lot of benefit from doing this calisthenics and stretching. Also, uh, at least once a week, he goes on like an eight, nine mile hike. After the eighth or ninth mile, he starts developing low back pain that makes it uncomfortable for him to continue and he has to cut his hike short. What do I take as a doctor from that kind of information? Well, first it shows me that this patient is very functional, that they're able to do stretches, they're able to do complicated and compound movements. They're not limited incredibly by this back pain. That was a good sign for me because as a doctor, my job is always to get my patients moving, especially when it comes to low back pain. There was a misconception back in the day that if your low back hurts, you should rest it. That's actually pretty inaccurate because what we found is the longer time you spend in bed with low back pain, the worse it can actually get. Now, this was my first time seeing the patient, so I asked what's going on in my patient's life. He described a very stressful life, especially when it comes to work. He's working many hours, 12 to 14 hours at times, and the back pain gets worse after standing all day. And at times the patient even became tearful because he was so upset about the stressors in his life with family, friends. There was a lot of things going on, but I could see that stress was a major component and there was a, a big mental component uh, of this pain. So after getting the full history and what was going on with his back pain, I perform a physical exam. Now on the physical exam, the patient had some muscle spasms, straight leg raise, which is a test that we do to check for sciatica was actually negative, which is a good sign. That means that the sciatic nerve is not involved in this type of pain. I did some other provocative tests and everything came up negative. There were some tender points that I elicited, but nothing that was really worrisome, no bone bony tenderness, the reflexes were fine. Those are important things that we rule out when we're looking at someone's back pain. So once I conducted the proper history, then I did the full physical. I then decided to explain to the patient what my thoughts are, are uh, on whether or not he needs an MRI. I told the patient that an MRI wouldn't benefit him 
because what we find on MRIs doesn't always translate to clinical symptoms. In fact, it doesn't the majority of the time. There have been studies done in the past where we scanned 100 people who have no back pain and found that on MRIs, they had significant findings. Arthritic changes, degenerative changes, bulging discs, but these patients weren't having back pain. So what does that tell us? That tells us that just because you have a finding on the, on the MRI, it doesn't mean that it'll have a clinical significance. And as a doctor, it's not my job to treat the MRI, it's to treat my patient. So I told the patient that based on how functional they are, based on my physical exam, knowing that they're able to do calisthenics every day, hike for eight miles. I could barely hike for eight miles. Their back pain seemed more tied to their stress levels in their job. Now, that's not to say my patient doesn't have a true medical problem. They do, and it's elicited by tender points. They're describing pain, which is a subjective measure, but they are describing it and they're saying how uncomfortable they are. So it's my job to fix that. So what I explained to the patient is, I thought that they could benefit from conservative management, specifically physical therapy. I also recommended some osteopathic manipulation, and I gave a recommendation of some reading material about mind-body conditions, where based on our mental state, some physical problems can arise like low back pain. As a primary care doctor, it's my job to delay the process of risky procedures as much as I can, as long as there's no pressing matters at hand. I didn't view that an MRI was the correct next step, but I understand that some patients may have reservations about that. I understand that they can have anxieties about their back pain. For example, why is it there? I would like to get a better look. So I explained that to the patient. If you don't agree with my evaluation or you think that you still need an MRI after this, this discussion, I'll happily write you a prescription for an MRI and we can get the process started. Or I'd like to see you back the following week so we can continue this conversation. You would have started physical therapy by now and gotten a couple of sessions in and we could see what progress you're making. And if an, during that point, you decide that you want an MRI, I'll write you the MRI then, I'll write you a referral to a specialist if that's what you want. And my patient seemed to be very understanding. Doctor, I appreciate you spending the time. Uh, I see what you're saying. I don't want the MRI now, I hear you. I'll see you next week, I'll start physical therapy and we'll go from there. And I was really proud of myself. As a doctor, it's not always easy to have a patient walk in who wants something and it's your job to convince them for their own good or at least from your medical opinion for their own good that it's not ideal what they want and that there's a better way. And for them to understand that and be on the same page, that takes skill and sometimes it takes many years for doctors to develop that skill. I came back the following week to my hospital. A patient called and left a, a complaint with uh, our office manager. The complaint was basically as follows, that the doctor that I saw did not help me at all with my pain. This doctor was overly spiritual and I'd like to see a real doctor who's willing to help me with my pain. It was something along the, those lines, I'm paraphrasing. The rest of the day I was left feeling like, what could have I done better? What, what did I do wrong? Where did the communication break down? So I started replaying the situation situation over and over in my head, trying to figure out what I can do better, how I can improve. And something that I do is I ask people who have more experience than myself or people who are experts in other fields for their advice. So I went to go see one of our behavioral specialists that work in, within our office. And basically what he told me is, there are some patients, which is a small percentage of patients, like less than 10%, even less than 5% probably. The more care you give them, the more time you spend with them, the more effort you try and go through in explaining something, the more that they take away from that something negative. Why is this doctor trying to sell me on this? What is this doctor? Is he trying to get over me on this? Especially if you're disagreeing what they initially came in for. And he said, what's well, a good strategy for that? Basically going into the patient's room, now that you know that their personality style and type, and just being very buttoned up. Well, you want an MRI? I don't think it's in your best interest to get an MRI. And say that, you know, if you don't agree with this, here's, uh, I can give you a referral to see a specialist, another doctor, or the test that you actually want ordered. What it taught me was that at certain times with certain personalities, it makes sense to be more brief and to be more succinct and just explain things clearly instead of trying to sell and influence that person because it can come off manipulative to some people. You can't fault yourself for everything. A situation could just happen because of an unfortunate 
coincidence, if you will. The fact that this patient never met me, I never met the patient, I tried to be really nice, the patient misinterpreted that for whatever reason, the patient filed the complaint, but the people that know me and the nurses and other patients will understand that my intentions were good. Intentions matter. There's many times where we have great intentions, but have bad outcomes. We need to always look at the intentions and then look at the outcomes. If the intentions were bad, now we know that person needs some work on that end of the spectrum. If the intentions were good, but the outcomes were bad, then we need to work on the action and figure out what we need to improve on that action. I wanna keep learning as a doctor, and I feel like if we can learn together along on this unique journey of mine, I think that's even more special, and that's why YouTube was created. Speaking of good intentions and bad outcomes, check out my mental health video right here. Stay happy and healthy, and I'll see you in this video. Click it, click it.